got a little bit of um, dissection of the Charlottesville aftermath here for you. And I think um, on the whole, it's pretty positive and here's why. Okay, first there's the direct incidence of costs, right? And most of those fell on our opposition, not on us, but on our opposition. The government spent millions of dollars preparing for this event. And instead of maintaining order as maybe we would have liked them to, and others probably would have liked them to, instead of maintaining order, they orchestrated chaos. And I think they did that intentionally, and I'll explain why. Um, this was a licensed, it was a scheduled permitted event. The organizers received a permit to put on this event and it was in support of the statue of Robert E. Lee that is being removed. That was the content and the context of this event, in support of the Robert E. Lee statue that is being removed for politically correct reasons, you know, to erase white history and to um, silence white history and to shame whites for their history, which is odd because if they wanted to shame us for our history, why not, why not keep the reminders of it around? Anyway, I don't understand it, but there's this politically correct agenda. Uh, I think it's a power play, really, you know, just to piss on white people by um, erasing their, their heritage and their history. Um, and just just like a muscle flexing thing, you know, hey, peons, we're in charge. Uh, look what we can do to your shit kind of thing. Um, and so there was a protest, a scheduled permitted protest. The city revoked the permit the organizers went to court and got a judge to rule that the permit had to be reinstated, and it was, and the protest was allowed to proceed, or so we thought. When everyone got there, um, the park, Lee Park, sometimes now known as Emancipation Park, was set up as the protest area. And uh, apparently the cops made the people showing up for the protest run a gauntlet of Antifa thugs to get into the designated protest area. So that was their first fail and the first indication that they were after something other than maintaining order. Now once they were in there, the barricades were not sufficient to prevent Antifa from gathering around and pelting everyone inside with rocks and piss bottles and whatever else. So again, um, obviously designed to provoke conflict rather than mitigate it. And after enduring that for a while, some of the people who were gathering for the protest evidently hopped one of the barriers in order to retaliate against this aggressive Antifa violence this aggressive violence by communist thugs who despise Western civilization and want to destroy it utterly because there are genetic abominations and rejects who can't succeed on any sensible terms. These thugs and their aggression, which amounts in this case, I think, to assault with a deadly weapon. I may be wrong, but like rocks, um, excrement, bodily fluids, those kind of things are all assault with a deadly weapon, I'm pretty sure. Um, so in order to retaliate against this assault with a deadly weapon and defend themselves, some individuals from the protest evidently hopped a barrier to go after these communist Antifa thugs. And that gave the police all the excuse they needed and undoubtedly the excuse they were looking for, the engineered excuse they were looking for to come into the, uh, the square and to drive the protesters out into the ranks of the counter-protesters, you know, ensuring that more altercations would ensue. So on every level, this was handled very badly. And that's why I thought it was funny when the police helicopter crashed and two of them died, because it was like karma. That's why I thought it was funny. Um, I would recommend you think it's funny too, because it is objectively funny. And they handled this very badly. They did the exact opposite of what they're supposed to do. And basically all the mayhem and all the blood and all the damage is on the hands of the authorities on this one because they brought it about. They engineered it. They set it up that way. Um, and then, so on the factual level though, you know, very, very little of the cost 
fell upon us. You had a bunch of communists run over, one of whom was killed. You had a helicopter crash, two cops killed. You had, um, you know, all the cost of all the responders who were on duty and all the overtime and all the federal resources and, um, you know, just everything else that was thrown at this fell on this hostile government. And, uh, you know, we came out of it relatively okay. You know, some of us were injured and, um, I think baked Alaska might have permanent vision damage. That's tragic, but that sounds like the worst thing I've heard about on our side. So, you know, all in all, we came out pretty okay. And they came out looking like a bunch of idiots and, um, paid a much higher price than we did. So that's just on a purely physical cost benefit level. Now on a moral level, on a propaganda level, I still think it was an even more decisive victory for the right. And I understand that the whole Nazi KKK thing looks bad. I think everybody knows that it looks bad. I'm not sure what the rationale was for even having those guys there. I guess it was billed as unite the right and they're kind of on the right. So maybe that's the rationale or, you know, maybe we're not going to be able to avoid those labels or those slurs no matter what. So, you know, why not have them there? But I don't think it looks good. I don't think many people think it looks good. And uh, that hurt us a little bit on the moral level, on the propaganda level, having those guys there. Um, but, you know, I think overall it was still a decisive moral victory and a decisive propaganda victory because we got 24 to 48 hours of news coverage, of insane news coverage, all channels, all the time, for like 24 to 48 hours. It might still be going on. I don't know. I haven't checked. But, um, and it was nuts. I mean, it wasn't just factually wrong because there weren't many facts presented. It was pure emotion. It was pure condemnation, pure outrage. But it was like, um, you know, there was some dishonest framing of the issue. Like, there certainly wasn't any attention paid to the violence and aggression of Antifa communist degenerate thugs. And there wasn't any attention paid to the, um, you know, gross negligence and incompetence of the police and authorities. So in that sense, focusing on, you know, some right wing violence taken out of context uh, is a dishonest framing of events and facts. But there's very little of that. The framing was almost none of the coverage. The coverage was all loading, and this is, these are techniques of postmodern deception, framing and loading, and loading is inserting imaginary content. Emotional and moral content is imaginary content. It's not factual content, and that's all the coverage was. It was just like, these people are despicable, they're gross, they're um, repugnant, and we condemn in the strongest possible terms. You know, everything they say, we're not going to tell you what they said because we didn't give them a chance to say anything. Uh, and even if we had, we wouldn't tell you it, but we condemn it in the strongest possible terms. And that was the entirety of the coverage. That was it. Um, you know, you have a little bit of dishonest framing at the beginning, and then you have a whole lot of loading, a whole lot of moral and emotional content, a whole lot of um, imaginary content. And then the overloading is the final key for techniques of postmodern deception. That's all channels, full blast all the time. And I think they really laid it on too thick this time. It's gonna work on most people. This stuff works. But I think they just really laid it on too thick and people are starting to see through the bullshit. This is ultimately gonna drive more people into our ranks. And it's ultimately gonna wake more people up to the hostile and malicious and dishonest intent of the people pulling the strings and running the institutions. Um, because this stuff isn't honest, right? It's totally dishonest. It's feminine coercion, basically. You know, shaming, rallying, nagging, scolding. It's not honest. You can use it to support or oppose any point. It has no connection to the truth. It has no connection to truth value. Um, it's just a way of suppressing dissent or silencing dissent by raising the cost of disagreement. And boy, have they. 
you know, how many fucking outraged, hysterical messages and comments I've gotten since this shit went down. They have riled up everyone, especially the women, because they fall for this stuff the hardest. Um, you know, and that's one of the reasons why it was a bad idea giving women the vote, because they're so emotional, right? They're so easy to manipulate with this shit. But a lot of men are seeing through it. A lot of men are seeing through it. And ultimately, that's what matters, because men are the ones who make shit happen, right? What women think is irrelevant. So this was a huge propaganda loss with the women, but I think it's going to end up being a huge moral and propaganda victory with the men because they're getting tired of this shit. And the whole thing, the government response, the media response, um, and then even Trump getting involved at the end, all of it sent one message. And that message was, if you are a white male, you do not have civil rights in this country anymore. You do not get to speak. You do not get to assemble. Your interests are not legitimate. Your grievances are not legitimate. Your existence as a white male in this country is not legitimate. And you have no place, no place in this country of the future that we are trying to create except as fertilizer. Fertilizer for this feminist multicultural hellhole. That's all you are. Um, and that's the message, loud and clear, no uncertain terms. There's going to be no peaceful redress of grievance here. There's going to be no negotiation. There's going to be no debate. We've been no platformed. All right? So now the government is Antifa, and Antifa is the government. But now that there's no possibility of reform, no possibility of debate, no possibility of negotiation, and no possibility of peaceful redress of grievance, now we get to have our revolution. All right? And I already said this stuff, this postmodern deception is going to work on most people. And that's fine. We don't need most people. We just need the people who see through it. You know, we need 3% of the white males in this country who see through it, who see behind the mask to the hostility, to the genocidal hostility and malice and parasitism that's behind all this stuff. And I think they really laid it on too thick and people are seeing through the veil. They're seeing behind the mask. They're seeing the malice and hostility behind it. Um, and uh, people are waking up. And all we need is 3%, all right? 3% of the white males in America is 4 million white males. 4 million pissed off white males can ruin everybody's fucking shit. And we will, all right? Because if we're not entitled to anything in exchange for our cooperation, then uh, there's no reason to cooperate, all right? It's better just to fuck up everybody's shit and be in charge again, all right? It's better just to risk it all in exchange for all than to lose everything guaranteed, all right? That's just the way it is. Those are the incentives they've given us, and so now we can have our revolution. And uh, I'm really kind of disappointed about Trump cucking out. You know, I like the guy. I'm glad we voted for him. I'm glad we elected him. I'm happy about a lot of the stuff he's accomplished. But I think in this case, the frame was just too strong for him. He couldn't break the frame. He couldn't command the frame. He bought into the frame. And, uh, you know, he got up there and he lied about human equality. He got up there and he lied about human equality, which is a disproven lie. All right, it defies science, it defies common sense, it defies observation, it defies experience. It's a fucking lie. He got up there and he lied about unity. We don't need unity. Unity is impossible, we're not one. All right, what we can have is cooperation through mutually beneficial exchange. Unequal people can cooperate. All right, there's not unity, but there can be cooperation. There's not going to be unity. Not across this political divide. Not across this philosophical divide. Not across this honesty divide. Not across this, you know, anything divide. Gender, race. There's not going to be unity. We could have had cooperation. Now we're not going to because they've ruled it out. Um, so we get to have our revolution. Um, but I think the, the truth is coming out. People are seeing through it. People are tired of it. They're fed up with it. They got the message loud and clear. And our message to you is, we're not going to take this shit. We're taking this shit back. And fuck everyone who stands in our way.